Hi, this audio has some static noise, so please turn down the volume if you use earphones. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. Okay, so hi, my name is Kai Liefe and welcome to the Fabulous Cancer Podcast. Today I'll be talking to Nicole Geller. Do I say that right? That is correct. Yes, Nicole oh. Geller. Yep. <laughs> and she's an oncology dietitian from the USA. So thank you so much for being here. Um, there are something, some topics that I want to talk about, uh, which are the fu- food slash nutrition during cancer treatment, does sugar feed cancer and eating red meat and soy and the misconception about soy and like breast cancer and stuff. Um, so I think we're going to start just with the, you know, food and nutrition during cancer treatment and, um, what, what is like really good to eat or what to avoid, mm-hmm. um, to eat during treatment or. Yeah. Yeah. During treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kaya, for having me. Um, Again, I'm an oncology dietitian in the U.S. So um, as a registered dietitian in oncology, I work with uh, cancer patients during treatment for radiation, chemotherapy, and around oncology surgery. And then I also do some cancer prevention uh, work with patients Mm post-treatment. But like you just had mentioned, we'll talk about nutrition during cancer treatment. So it's so important. So um, there's kind of two big recommendations that I want patients to look at. And I specialize with adults. So these recommendations today are for, yeah, right, for adults um, undergoing um, treatment, uh, cancer treatment. So you want to maintain weight and you want to emphasize protein. So during cancer treatment, the most important thing is to fuel your healthy cells. A lot of the time, the focus, if if a patient has cancer, when they have cancer and they're going through treatment, the focus is how do we destroy this cancer? You know, that, mm-hmm. and then that, what happens, right. So then what ends up happening is people kind of focus on well, what foods should I should or should not eat specifically yeah. to that cancer. Right. Diets, right. But we, which is right. And Mm-hmm. like special diets or trends or things they read on Instagram or social media or the news. So th- this is the deal. You always have to really want to be mindful of your sources. You want to talk to a dietitian and then one that's in oncology because they're going to bring the evidence based what the science actually says. So the focus during cancer treatment for nutrition really needs to be on your healthy cells, how you can fuel your healthy cells because your cancer treatment is going to kill your cancer. That's what will do it. There's no special diet or special magical food to, you know, shrink uh, your cancer. It is your cancer treatment that will do that. So if you, if a, if a patient is nourished better through an emphasis on protein, so that's going to be your plant-based or your animal-based proteins, it's whatever the patient decides, um, they're going to end up doing better during treatment because your healthy cells really support you throughout that process. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And the best way to kill your cancer is to make sure you don't have mistreatments. You don't want to have reduced doses for your chemotherapy. You want to fulfill the prescription by your oncologist. And that's where the dietitian comes in to support you with nutrition to make sure that you get all those treatments. So, right. So during, so, um, in summary, during cancer treatment, are there foods that you should limit? And the answer is no, there are no foods that you should limit. And actually you should emphasize eating enough that you maintain weight. Yes. So it's not the time to lose weight. Right. And you also, and with breast cancer sp- patients, usually what ends up happening is, um, and this actually can happen really to, to any, any cancer patient, but I do see it a little bit more with the breast cancer population is there tends to be weight gain. And we actually don't want that either. So we want to just maintain the weight that we're coming in on for cancer treatment. We don't want to lose or gain. And, um, you just do that by, you know, not limiting your foods, emphasis on protein and even exercise during cancer treatment. It helps to improve fatigue. It helps with appetite. Exercise is so important during cancer treatment. And us- it used to be like... Like the uh, used and stuff? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. That, that's, right? Mm-hmm, because that's what I'm learning now too, is that like when I uh, had cancer, I was 11 years old and it was all about, you know, take your rest and take it easy. And now I went to... Um, uh, like information day and they're like no we need to get the kids you know like as much exercise and and fitness or you know sporty activities to keep them active because it's so important you know and that's the same for if you're dealing with cancer as an adult or a young adult i think it's so important to always be active and to you know not be as tired or to kill the fatigue in a way exactly that is exactly the recommendation so just like you said it used to be rest and now it's the other research has shown 
that you actually will, like I said, you'll improve fatigue, appetite, and even side effects. Your nausea may be less if you make sure to have exercise, and that's any form of activity that you enjoy. So that's pretty cool because it kind of, you know, um, creates things that you, more things that you can do during your cancer treatment. Um, rest, of course, is important, but you can still get pretty active. Yeah. Exactly. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> that's so nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> and now we're gonna talk about something that's very. Oh my God, it's very important to talk about the whole the sugar feed cancer topic, which is yes crazy. Everyone's going on about it. I think um, it it was. I'm gonna tell a little bit about my side because, which I think was actually really stupid. Um, so I had cancer when I was ten, and uh, and eleven, and during mm -hmm. this time I ate a lot of water ice cream. I drank like one liter of chocolate milk a day you know and uh I never mm -hmm, nice lips. thank you and and i was yeah. you know eating so much sugar and everything and i was like yeah you know I, i never thought about it and then now um i'm 24 and i watched a documentary on netflix a few months ago and it was about like oh sugar is gonna feed your cancer cells and blah 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 and i was mm -hmm, like oh my god mm -hmm. you know and they were really explaining it in a way where i was like oh my god that's so true And I was really like, oh, maybe sugar does feed cancer. Even though when I had cancer, I was like, you know, eating everything possibly mm -hmm. sugary as yeah. I could. So Good. now I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, okay, that that you know, just because I watch one, you know, documentary based on that, it's it's misinformation, obviously, because how can I right. I mean, if that was right, then we already would have known that, you know, so right. if you can talk a little bit more or explain a little bit more about like the, the misconception between that and um, yeah, does sugar actually feed cancer or not? The right. Reason. Correct. Okay. I love it. And this comes up all the time and you're a good example about how you thrive through your cancer treatment and you know, you have, you have not had recurrence and you had a very you know, you had high sugar foods or any type of sugar foods and you did well. So that's a, you're a really yeah. good example of what patients should be doing. They should have, what is You said a liter of chocolate milk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Let's let, yeah, let's spread yeah. that around. You should have a liter of chocolate milk. Uh-huh. Yes. Because because what's in there, right? Protein, carbs, fat. That's mm -hmm. yeah, it's a really good choice. So, um, does sugar feed cancer? So this is the deal, whatever foods that you're going to eat, it's not going to um, increase the growth or decrease the growth. Right. So a lot of, uh, shows or news or scary pictures about like your cancer just disappearing when you have a low sugar diet, mm -hmm. which is kind of, you know, what does that even mean? What sugar are they even talking about? You know what I mean? They're not even very specific. So that's your first red flag. Like, yeah. what are they even saying? Yeah. You know, um, so you cannot change what the only way you can, um, change the growth to reduce the growth of your cancer is with cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. Um, so kind of where the questions arise is, so there, once you're diagnosed with cancer, there's already going to be a, a higher uptake of glucose. So like normally someone without cancer, they, you know, have a, gosh, the number, I can't remember the exact amount of grams, but there's a certain amount of glucose uptake because glucose is your body's preferred uh, form of fuel. So your organs and your brain, your brain, you know, think about chemo brain, your brain thrives the best off carbohydrates, which includes sugar. So mm -hmm. that's one reason you definitely don't want to cut it out. Right. Cause mm -hmm. we want to nourish our brain. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you are diagnosed with cancer, there's already an increased uptake of glucose. So that's kind of kind of where that kind of starts because there are metabolic changes with, with carbohydrates, um, which are glucose and sugar. All those are the same. Um, and then your cancer does feed off of glucose. It does. But the thing is though, is whether you eat a lot or a little is not going to change your cancer. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. You can't, right. You can't starve your cancer. You can't change it. So the focus really becomes, like I said, what we we're talking about before, we need to focus back on the healthy cells and what do your healthy cells need? So let's say, uh, you, you, you heard sugar feeds cancer. You don't know the science. You haven't talked to your oncology dietitian yet. And you want to try that, right? So what's going to end up happening is you're not going to make a difference in your cancer. If you were to have less carbohydrates, less sugar, the cancer isn't going to be affected. So the cancer will pull from your body stores, your glucose stores and yeah. thrive. 
And then your healthy cells will just fail because they'll be malnourished. You're eating less food. There's no carbohydrates. And then what ends up happening from that, the patient becomes more fatigued. Immune response goes down. Like it, it all affects the healthy cells. And then meanwhile, cancer's fine, you know, yeah. and, <laughs> and right. So you, we can't change that. We can't, we eat food and we cannot change where it goes. Okay. Yeah. So we just need to make sure that we eat as many carbohydrates as we can to make sure we have enough stores, enough nutrients to go around to the healthy cells. Because if you optimize your nutrition status by fueling your healthy cells, you will perform better during cancer treatment, which ultimately is what is going to kill your cancer. So in summary, does uh, cancer feed off of sugar or carbohydrates or glucose? Yes. But that doesn't matter because you're getting cancer treatment, which is the only thing that can kill that cancer. Exactly. The other bit, Right. And the other bit is the healthy cells. How can we nourish them by eating sugar, carbs, protein, all those things. So we just try to, as an, as your oncology dietitian or working with your dietitian at the cancer Institute, we just really want to switch the focus back on how can we fuel your healthy cells? Cause they're still going to be there once cancer is gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so does that kind of, you have any other questions kind of based on that? Does that help to des- describe the situation and where the confusion comes from? I, no, I think it's good. You know, I mean, if, 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 sugar did feed cancer i mean we would have known that by now you know i mean Mm -hmm. it would have been like commonly known rather than Mm -hmm. the random karen who's going to be like well you know sugar's going to feed your cancer you know and we're like oh my god you know also throw some essential oils on me you know uh, it's ridiculous you know right absolutely when i had cancer it was in 2006 and it was during the time where people didn't use the internet as much. And now people are like using, you know, getting false advertisements about it. And they're like, oh my mm-hmm. God, I'm educated on cancer treatment. I'm like, eat some avocados. And I'm like, what the hell? No, you know. <laughs> it's not the cure all. There's no one food. Yeah. There's no one food that can make or break your cancer. That's true. <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> you know avocados are good, but it's not just about avocados, right? I know. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. So, um, yeah. And then to the next topic, which is the eating red meat and the soy, um, mm-hmm. which are two different topics, but I think, uh, maybe we can talk about red meat first because soy has something to do with breast cancer as well. Right. Like some misconception. <laughs> Yeah, it's there's misconceptions with soy. Yes, and then um, with red meats, it's different. It's more related to colorectal yeah. cancer. So, what? Right. Tell me, um, what would you like me to kind of dive in with the red meats, the misconceptions, or what the recommendations are? What? What's? What do you think, Kaya? Um, yeah, I think like what is um, like there's a certain amount uh, of red meat you can only eat mm-hmm. like a week, right? As in order sure, to yes. reduce cancer or like certain cancer or by eating those this kind of meat yes or something? Mm. yes absolutely yes okay so so i pull so it's really important to know you know where your information is coming from we kind of already talked about that so the world cancer research fund um they're kind of amazing so they work globally they um collect thousands of studies that have been done all over the world with different populations different age groups to kind of find out what are the things that may increase or decrease risk for cancer? So they publish what's called the Continuous Update Project, which is um, online for free. You could download it and read it. And it has all the, the research, um, all the studies listed within um, that Continuous Update Project. So they publish on what, you know, what is evidence-based? What does the science actually show? Yeah. So for red, right, okay. So what they published about red and processed meats is that there seems to be that eating more than 18 ounces of red meat, which is around 500 grams, yeah. and red meat is lamb, beef, pork, um, and goat, is going to be is going to increase the risk of colorectal cancer. Okay. So they don't right. So they don't really know exactly how the red meat affects the development of colorectal cancer. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the curious part of it. Mm-hmm. So um, the other possible. Um, the link there is grilling meat. So like cooking red meats at high temperatures mm. can also produce other cancer causing compounds. Um, so I'm not saying to never grill your meats again, but just, you know, not cooking meats at a very high temperature yeah. and trying to limit those grilled meats. So, um, that is the recommendation currently. And that's from the world cancer research fund. Yeah. So 18 ounces a week. So you still can have red meat. And during cancer treatment, you do not need to limit because we're not working on cancer prevention during cancer treatment. Um, 
Right. But post-cancer treatment, if you want to reduce risk for colorectal cancer, one of the things that you could do to reduce risk would be to limit red meats and then processed meats. You want to try to limit those all together okay. um, if you can. Mm -hmm. And then um, that one's a little tricky because some people, depending on you know, their food preferences or their culture, they're like, well, hey, we you know, eat processed meats all the time. So you know, that's where we just kind of focus on the other things you can do to reduce risk for cancer, like, you know, exercising, including more fruits and veggies. So it's not all about exactly what to take out, but other things that you can put in to help reduce risk. So try to limit red meat and processed meats um, as much as you can for a colorectal risk. Okay, perfect. Because talking about the vegetables and the food, I think that's quite interesting to put in here as well, or talk about mm -hmm. because a lot of people yeah. are like, well, you know, I want to eat my fruit and vegetables, but they like spray it and stuff, you know, or they put like the, oh my God, I forgot the name, like the uh, pesticides. Yeah. And they're like, well, that's going to cause cancer, you know, and I'm like, well, it's sure, 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 sure. It, you know, is it yes. that's just misconception as well, right? Yes, true. Okay. So pesticides. So, and there are, we all, we can't always, especially for pediatrics, mm -hmm. um, but for adults too, we can't always fight against cancer. It may come no matter what we do. It's a part of life. It's a part yeah. of aging, you know, part of our gender or our race. We may be at increased risk. So we can't ever live perfectly. And yeah. so sometimes people think, okay, well, if I go organic, that's going to be, you know, the ticket to cancer free. So um, it's important to note that whether you do organic or not organic, both of those fruits and veggies are going to be excellent choices. They will contain the same nutrients, the same fiber, the same antioxidants, the same phytochemicals, which help to destroy any type of damaged cell from like an environmental factor, chemicals, sunshine, injury, fruits and veggies, whether they're organic or not, um, are going to go in and help to repair cells and keep them from becoming more damaged, which ultimately leads to cancer. Right. So th the thing is, is, um, organic fruits and veggies use pesticides too. So oh, wow. yeah, so they both use pesticides. So I would not, if you, if you feel better and you eat more fruits and veggies going organic and it's okay on your budget, totally fine. Yeah, exactly. But don't feel like you have to go that route. You can just yeah. buy regular fruits and veggies or canned or frozen. They're going to bring those benefits. Yeah. So, um, don't be afraid. Don't feel like you're failing or not doing everything you can if you're not buying organic, because that's not true. As long as you're eating fruits and veggies, you're, you're working towards cancer prevention. Awesome. Yeah. Cause I was just going to say like about the frozen one, I learned from your Instagram page. I was like, it's better actually to have frozen food rather than like non-frozen food. And I think like, yes. maybe you can make like ice cream or really nice smoothie from it as well. Yes, uh, exactly. Then, you know, during treatment or something, that'd be so delicious. Oh my God. <laughs> yes yes smoothies and milkshakes are so delicious and you totally can add in any type of frozen um berries or veggies or anything like that are going to be fine yes and frozen and canned veggie fruits and veggies still contain all those great nutrients that's a good point to make uh, don't discriminate where, where they are you know, the form they come in they're all good all fruits and veggies are good yeah <laughs> Exactly, because the reason why they have the frozen, um, how do I say this, mm, they might be better than non-frozen because they keep the vitamins or something, right? Or Yes, okay, so yeah, true. So like when you, um, like the fruits and veggies, they go like straight to freeze, they um, basically you're like preserving their nutrients. So you can yeah. make the argument that frozen fruits and veggies actually are more nutrient dense and because they have a little bit more um, they're preserved, right? Cause they're frozen. Yeah. So, so I guess if you want to look at nutrient value, it's possible that your fruits and veggies that are frozen, they're going to have a little bit more. So that's oh. actually uh, a good point to make. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. I, Cause whenever yeah. I look at the fruits in the, in the, um, like freezer, um, department, I'm like, mm, that does look right. like it's 200 years old or something, you know, I'm like, no, it's, it's actually better than, than just buying it from the shelf. So, okay. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yes. Then the misconception about soy and breast cancer. Yes. Okay. So this is super common too. I think this is in one of those um, those big topics. So actually, it's it's a huge misconception because soy actually reduces the risk for breast cancer. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And then also, soy is going to be a great source of protein. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to have uh, fiber, which both of those help to, so fiber is going to help reduce risk for cancer. Protein is going to help support um, your added, pro your increased protein needs during cancer treatment. 
Um, it's going to have other vitamins and minerals. So it's just really a great, it's actually a great food and it helps to reduce risk for uh, breast cancer. So um, the confusion is so, so soy is called a phytoestrogen. And if you break down that word, it basically just means kind of like a lookalike of estrogen. But the thing is, though, is it's not human estrogen. It's not. Soy does not contain estrogen. It is not human estrogen. It has that tricky word of, you know, being called a phytoestrogen that leads to confusion. It's just not human estrogen at all. Right. So soy actually is a great food source, great full of protein, has isoflavones, which basically is like antioxidants, and it just helps to reduce risk. So it's also a good source of polyunsaturated fats, omega threes, omega six. So these are all. It's just like a nutrient powerhouse. Oh wow! And they've actually right. So they've they've actually looked at. Um, I think we yeah, we've kind of talked about this before, but it seems that other populations that have more soy in their diet actually have reduced risk for breast cancer. Right. So yeah, it's just a big misconception. I think definitely for the Western Western part of the world, we think soy is bad and it's actually not, and we should be including more of it yeah. in our diet. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it, it, it helps to prevent cancer. Yeah. So it's the opposite of what most people think. Yes. Right, because mm, so the reason why people are thinking that it might might like increase is because it has the same word in it as like something with breast cancer. Or? Yes, exactly. Oh. Yeah, so well, it's described as a phytoestrogen. That's like its chemical structure. It's a look. Basically, what phytoestrogen means, if you break down the word, it means like a look alike to estrogen. And even just not even that. Even if you just think of the word phytoestrogen, you're like, well, that sounds like estrogen. And breast cancer risk is from increased hormones. So it's just kind of if you just look at the word, it gets confusion. But if we look at the science, it is not human estrogen. It does not contain. It is not going to increase your risk for cancer, but it'll actually decrease risk for breast cancer. And it's just, it's, it's just not, it just soy does not contain estrogen. And yes, that's where the confusion comes from. A lot of the times it's because it's considered a phytoestrogen. Yeah. I think that's actually um, related to the sugar, you know, the sugar feed cancer. It's like, well, you know, if you eat a lot of, all of a lot of sugar, then, you know, you get fat and maybe you have more of a chance to get cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's why people are like, well, mm -hmm. sugar might be cancer, even though, no, you know, calm down, <laughs> you know, like, and, and that's maybe the same with this. In a way. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm, that's crazy. Okay. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes. Well, thank you so much for talking to me about these topics. I think it's very important to keep, like, the facts straight about nutrition during cancer treatment and, like, before and after because there are so many, you know, phony websites and misinformation ads to scare people. Yes. Um, so if you want more information or want to talk to Nicole, go to her Instagram. That is oncology.nutrition.strong. I will also put her page in the link below. And thank you so much for that. Yes, Kaya, thank you so much for having me. I loved uh, speaking with you. And please, yeah, everyone reach out to me if you have more questions. I would love to discuss more. Yes, thank you so much. And I will see you guys in another podcast. <laughs>